Now moving ahead, ladies and gentlemen, our next panel session of the day on manufacturing 4.0, something little different from what we have been hearing and listening and understanding since the morning. Manufacturing 4.0, transform the way you manufacture. And before I call on the expert panel members, I would like to shed some light on some points of the discussion for this particular panel. How modern technology is keeping costs down and food quality up. How IoT digitalization is making manufacturing plants more efficient and flexible. Global technology trends in plant automation and many more. And now let me welcome all the honorable panel members with a big round of applause from all of you. Mr. Shailesh Godekar, Global Corporate uh, Head Quality from Marikoa. Big round of applause to Shailesh Ji. Shailesh Ji, welcome to the panel. Always a pleasure having you. Joining next, we have Mr. Kumar Tarun, DGM Quality from Guild Free Industries. A big round of applause to Kumar Ji. Kumar Ji, welcome to the panel. Joining next, we have Mr. Anil Bhutani, Head Manufacturing, Mother Dairy Fruit and Vegetables. A big round of applause to Anil Ji. Anil Ji, welcome to the panel. Joining next, we have Mr. Praveen Kumar Arohi, DGM DS Group. A big round of applause to Praveen. Praveen, welcome to the panel. Joining next, ladies and gentlemen, we have Dr. Dheeraj Mishra, Manager Operations from Mondelez India Foods. A big round of applause to Dr. Mishra. Doctor, welcome to the panel. And now I would like to call on stage our honorable moderator for this panel session, Dr. A.K. Tyagi, Executive Director from Haldiram. So a big round of applause to Dr. Tyagi. Dr. Tyagi, welcome to the panel. Dr. Tyagi, all over to you. And couldn't have been a better person to moderate this wonderful panel session. Here's wishing a fantastic panel to all of you. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I think we'll start the introduction ourselves. Let's start from the last one. Hello. Yeah, good afternoon all. Myself, Dr. Dheeraj Misra. I am in Mondelez and uh, I am taking care of biscuit operations in North. Hi, good afternoon everyone. My name is Kumar Tarun. I am head quality for Gelf Industries. Earlier I was head quali quality for ITC Foods Division and before that I was general manager of operations for Pepsi India Holding. Thank you. Hello, hi, I'm Shailesh Kodekar. I am a global corporate quality head for Marico, which is into beauty and wellness. Hello, I'm Anil Bhutani. I am basically from Mother Dairy. I completed my inning here and joined a new group called Jackson as a CEO of manufacturing. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, myself, Praveen Arohi. I am uh, working as a unit head at DS Group. I am basically a dairy technologist. Thank you. Welcome to all respective parent members. Welcome to audience. I start my introduction myself. Myself, Dr. Eki Tyagi. I am the Executive Director of Haldi Ram Group. Uh, then we'll start the flow of the discussion that how modern technology keeping costs down and food quality up. Haldi Ram has done the trained settler in the traditional snack namkeen namkeen food. We are, uh, Haldirab is the first company who has started the packed branded traditional snack in 1990. Haldirab is the first company who do the 100% automation of all uh, making the traditional snack with, the, with minimum human interference. I just go with the practical example. In the last two decades, we have I think invested huge money on the invent automation. Food industry is a very sensitive and very difficult industry when it comes to the hygiene and consistency in the quality. In the food industry, it is very difficult to maintain the hygiene and consistency in the quality. And automation is a blessing by which you can maintain the hygiene also, you can maintain the consistency in the quality also. The best example is the COVID period. 
हल्दीराम हैज द बिग वॉल्यूम ऑफ द ट्रेडिशनल स्नैक इट इज इज ए कारीगर ओरिएंटेड कंपनी एंड वी हैव टेकन द चैलेंज विद द हेल्प ऑफ द टीम एंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ द बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्टर टू कन्वर्ट कारीगर इंडस्ट्री टू द रियल कारखाने का रूप इन द कोविड पीरियड वैन देर वी आज ए बैन ऑन द लेबर एंड ऑल द लेबर हैज गोन टू द देर होम तो इट वॉज बिकम वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू कैटर आवर कस्टमर एट दैट टाइम वी रिलाईज एक्चुअली द नीड ऑफ द ऑटोमेशन बिकॉज वी हैव द फुल्ली ऑटोमेटिक प्लांट हैविंग द लाइन थ्री थाउजेंड के जी पर आवर जस्ट लाइक ए मूंग दाल इज थ्री थाउजेंड के जी के जी पर आवर आलू भुजिया इज थ्री थाउजेंड के जी पर आवर सब लाइन इज टू थाउजेंड के जी पर आवर तो वी विल एबल टू कैटर आवर कस्टमर विद वेरी मिनिमम वर्कर which we have collected from the nearby area so in the covid period we actually judged the importance of the automation by increasing the productivity by doing the work with the less minimum man power and maintaining the consistency in the quality and same hygiene to to our customer there are lot of the advantage of the automation just like a consistency in the quality number one secondly you can maintain the hygiene very well thirdly you can keep the productivity you can reduce the labor, uh, electricity cost and you can also reduce the labor cost and fuel cost ultimately the conversion cost there is also demerit of the automation that you require the high capital cost especially in the product which is not available in the globally when we started the automation of in aldiram so no technology was available globally then we have to develop the we have gone to the various countries just like a usa and europe seen their technology and try to adopt the technology to our product so it is a high cost impactive but finally in that cell uh, with our experience we suggest to everybody if you have the low volume then semi automation is the perfect answer if you have the high volume then fully automation automation is the, is the perfect answer and in the high volume on the long term the automation is cheaper than as compared to of not doing the automation so i don't take more time because every panel member has to be now i come to the question number 1 question number 2 challenges face in maintaining the safety and quality in manufacturing process uh, to select thank you sir uh, i think it's very important first a belief of a organization should be that quality is a key enabler for driving business growth i think that's a starting point a strong belief within the organization that quality is a key enabler for driving business growth having said that let me put down some of the key challenges and some of the solutions based on the experience which we had first is clarity of thoughts i think each and every workman on the shop floor right from the workman to the staff has to have a clear cut clarity of what he is doing what is the outcome of his work which he is getting and that has to be very important and that should be percolated across all the levels so one we should have a very clear cut clarity of thoughts the second most important part is which i personally believe if you want to ensure food and quality safety basically is design the required basically infrastructure you have to build quality in design it's like saying that you if you want me to drive at a 150 km per hour i can't have a alto okay i need to have a mercedes or something so you have to have a right infrastructure equipment to build quality in design that's one of the foundation of a right quality and a food safety i think the third part is a culture of a organization and stops from top uh, when i'm saying culture i think a very important walk the talk and each member should feel that it's like a owner was a tenant i am the owner of the organization i am not a tenant the moment you get this shift in the mindset that i am a owner of organization half of your work is done i think that culture is very important that 
food safety is my baby and not his baby. That's very important. So the culture of the organization. The fourth I personally feel is we should have, I have seen quality systems or processes in silos. Uh, it's very important that these quality systems and processes has to be across the value chain. Uh, and that's very, very important. When I'm talking of a value chain, it starts from a RM, PM vendor, then your manufacturing, your depot, distributors, and your retailers, and even consumers. So you need to integrate the quality systems and processes so that it runs across the value chain. And that's very important. That's where you will ensure the right consumer quality. I think the fifth thing is very important, which I also personally feel, is capability building of the members, of everyone. You need to invest, not in the current technology, not in the current capability, but future capability. Because that's, and always I believe, people are your assets of the organization. Everything depreciates, but the people value appreciates. I think you need to invest in them, building up the capability. And I think the last part which I strongly believe is reward and recognition. I think you need to ha have celebrate small wins, recognize the value of the outcome which they have delivered it throughout. And it's very, very important because that plays a very important role in motivation. So reward and recognition is very important. I think wh where the world is moving is, I think it's moving towards something we call as, we talk about excellence, we talk about excellence everywhere, but the world is moving towards affordable excellence. Now what is affordable excellence? It is not about stripping your product and services to get it cheaper, but it is getting more, it is called as MLM. What is M? Getting more in terms of performance with less resource and most important in terms of for more people. So it's MLM. And I want to end with saying that I think every organization is, has a stage of maturity in terms of quality. Uh, it was like manufacturing quality has moved to a consumer quality. It has moved to a consumer experiential quality. And just to give an example of a consumer a manufacturing quality, uh, now it has become hygiene. Uh, let me talk of an oil example. Earlier we had the specs very defined, IV, PV, SAP value, which was a manufacturing quality. But the, today the shift has happened to a consumer quality. If the same oil which is taken by a consumer used, he or she is not concerned about what is PV, FFA or IV. He is concerned what is the color of the oil, how do I get that experience when I fry, when I use it, okay? That taste, that's very important. And now I think it's very important that we shift towards consumer experiential quality. Again, taking an example for oil, if I use that oil on a day one, I get that wow experience. Same experience do I get on the 45th day when you use the last drop of the oil? That's very important. So organization will be in a different maturity map. Either it will be in a manufacturing quality or a consumer quality or a consumer experiential quality. But the end of the day, I think it has to move towards the consumer experiential quality. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I think you have very nicely uh, summarized that it will start from top to bottom and enrollment of everybody. And I agree with you that the culture is very important. And in the organization, the theme should be that everybody is working for the customer and customer is paying the salary of everybody. Then customer delight is mandatory to achieve the zero tolerance in the quality. Now we'll come to the Mr. Tanun, third question, better knowledge of data patterns from production helping for better factory maintenance. Thank you, Dr. Sir. Uh, thank you, Salesh, talking about uh, quality and what are the challenges we are facing. <coughs> So you'd be surprised uh, why we are talking on maintenance and data pattern. Oh, how it is related to quality, how it is related to automation. See, uh, whenever there is a failure in plant, which is related to any equipment, sensor or anything, what happens? The quality goes hay haywire, the production stops, or this is which we call as a breakdown. Right, to avoid this, there are multiple type of maintenance which has been done in plant. 
सो नंबर वन पीपल कॉल सी एल सी एल टी एस करते हैं सेकेंड टाइम विच वी कॉल इट प्रिवेंटिव मेंटेनेंस यूज बेस कंडीशन बेस ब्रेक डाउन इज द लास्ट वन नाउ इट इज कंसेप्ट इज इंक्रीजिंग विच वी कॉल एज ए प्रिडिक्टिव मेंटेनेंस और वी कॉल वी कॉल इज एन प्रिस्क्रिप्टिव मेंटेनेंस राइट इट इज लाइक एन डॉक्टर प्रिस्क्रिप्शन हु इज राइटिंग द डॉक्टर प्रिस्क्रिप्शन right so the system has come where the data related to all the monitor equipments are available for example for a pump if i am running in a plant that gives water or flow to syrup or flow to oil or anything and in case pump fails everything goes haywire so there is a system where we can monitor the pressure flow current vibration and we can find out when the pump will fail when the sint- symptoms of failure is coming so all the sensors helps us to predict the performance of the equipment there are so number of examples in any plant and machinery this can be installed for example for a boiler if i have a temperature gauge if i have a pressure gauge if i have an id fan speed if this has been continuously monitored we can know the optimal performance and we can also estimate when my boiler is going to fail how does it helps and how we can monitor it right so simply getting the data or manually recording the data won't help because there is isn't dynamic environment right so here we take the help of automation consistently monitoring the data and this has been analyzed by ai or machine learning right these are the advanced terms which has been used today in automation industry 4.0 where it will predict when the machine will fail or when the equipment will fail it also gives in the prescriptive it also gives you an recommendation what needs to be done to ensure that we can run it for slightly bit longer period of time for example reduce the flow adjust the flow right reduce the load this kind of recommendation comes from prescriptive maintenance software which is used in industry 4.0 so it not only helps us to run the plant it also helps us to ensure that my cost i am keeping it down because my manpower would be idle i would be having wastages for startup and end up and most important part when we are talking about quality and food safety if we are talking about dairy industry pathogen microbial contaminations if i am talking about other food industry there is a high impact on quality in terms of if the moisture go above right product can get burnt right sensorial parameter and food safety parameter so all this data can be captured easily by stage by stage putting different sensors right at different equipments and we can use analytics which is through artificial intelligence to monitor it and it will give you a message it will give you a call right now this is the condition to any label in the organization thank you dr sir if we convert whatever tanundi has said that in terms of the operational excellence so in the last two years we have started in our plant that is called as oee operation equipment excellence when you calculate the operation ex- equipment excellence in terms of the management language then all these point will be covered that how much breakdown of the machine how much breakdown of the equipment this is very simple suppose you have the capacity of one line 1000 kg per hour and you have the 24 hours if you multiply 1000 kg by 24 hours so per day production will be should, should be minimum 24 metric ton per per day when you calculate the oe and you are man, suppose you are producing 20 ton per, per day so then you have to multiply 20 by 24 then you will get the oe this is 80% 85% then you have do the, the root cause analysis then you will find this is the change over time this is the breakdown time this is the machine time so this terminology can be importance of the maintenance can be calculated in terms of the oe thank you
now we come to the fourth question how iot digitalization making manufacturing plant more efficient and flexible dheeraj ji hello thank you dr saab i think this is uh, very important question very nice question and uh, th this will give us insight uh, how uh, industry 4.0 uh, is important and what we are doing so uh, we need to first understand uh, basically uh, where we are in industry 4.0 particularly in food industry so as dr saab told in the beginning that uh, in india kind of country we are having multiple challenges uh, particularly for uh, automation and uh, then if we talk about industry 4.0 so if we want to do uh, industry 4.0 kind kind of thing means industry 4.0 means it is a physical cyber connect so we are still on industry 3.0 means in food industry several industries are still not industry 3.0 but if we consider overall industry nearly 85 90% industry will be industry 3.0 but very few industries are industry 4.0 industry 3.0 started in somewhere in 70 so it took around 50 years so now i think every company is having computerization networking etc so this is part of industry 4.0 now if we want Uh, first thing flexibility and uh, uh, complexity reduction will come to next first thing we need to understand how we will implement for implementation of industry 4.0 we need at least three things first thing we need investment which is a real challenge for food industry as dr saab told in the beginning that industry food industry is operating at very very low margins so we are having challenge in terms of uh, infrastructure investment second thing we need digital mindset means we need digital capability so we need people who can understand the data what uh, mr tarun has told that we need data analysis so we should have person who can understand data who can analyze data and basis data they can predict what we need to do with this data and second thing if we are doing certain thing we need to do some pilot and then how we are scaling up this so in mondelez Uh, we are the only food industry in india for which our first plant of sri city has been certified by uh, world uh, economic forum as a digital lighthouse so what this digital lighthouse means digital lighthouse means we are operating this plant as very very high efficiency at very low manpower our 100% processes are automated start from raw material storage to dispatch we are having everything digital everybody in the mobile everybody in the plant can see on his mobile screen what my plant efficiency is running what particular machine is running on which efficiencies what my overpacking is running how many boxes we have produced how many boxes we have dispatched means everything automated so this is called industry 4.0 means complete cyber physical connect a factory of 1 lakh ton capacity can operate on 50 55 man power that is that is called means factory of future in mondelez in american organizations we use term factory of future or smart factory while in european countries be called as a digital factory so this is meaning of digital factory now if we are coming on the flexibility how we can say first thing we need to invest so when we have invested then what flexibility we will get out of this so flexibility will be like that if we are having complete digital network and we are having suppose five factories in india my first order will come that will be digitally communicated to all my five factories if my first factory is overloaded that data will digitally transfer to and product will will convert to the production planning to second factory 
एंड सेकेंड फैक्ट्री विल प्रोड्यूस सो दिस इज कॉल्ड फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी वन मोर वेरी गुड एग्जाम्पल ऑफ फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी ऑल ऑफ अस बिलोंग्स टू फूड इंडस्ट्री एंड एवरी वेयर नॉट ओनली इन फूड इंडस्ट्री इन अदर इंडस्ट्रीज नाउ वी आर फेसिंग प्रॉब्लम ऑफ एबसेंटिज we don't know which worker will take leave on which date and particularly like uh, tyagi ji is operating company uh, like haldiram where always requirement comes on festive season and people will take leave on festive season itself so nobody can understand who will take leave then if you are having a digital factory through hr analytics you can analyze the leap pattern of your workers you can generate data for one year two year three year and basis that you can predict which person will take you can divide that data into age group gender regionality religion and you can understand which person will take leave during which season and basis that you need to convert or you need to change your production planning etc so these are predictive thing very com uh, good companies are uh, analyzing these things i have already started uh, as a pilot plant or uh, as a pilot project or some companies are doing in future there are companies uh, companies like uh, in india boss boss india is doing when burger will come he will punch his card he will get to know on which operation he has to work with with this kind of flexibility suppose we are hiring a worker now how we will utilize that worker we will deploy directly that particular worker on the line he will do some mistake and will result to our either product wastage or quality loss then what we need to do with the help of technology we can create augmented reality or virtual reality reality classrooms we can give real time training to the worker and after getting real time training we can deploy him to the operation and if we will do that we will get right first kind of result so that is the beauty of industry 4.0 we can get this kind of flexibility we can have very quick market response particularly in uh, we have what we have uh, seen in the uh, pandemic season nobody was knowing which product will sell in the market and what demand will come and people were struggling for operation so in this kind of scenario this type of digitization automation are very very helpful but definitely this first investment we need to do and this investment will be payback also if we are having this kind of analysis we can save our several downtimes losses several man, uh, production losses due to manpower several waiting time to uh, for market response so suppose if uh, we are having a factory in delhi and we are getting one order from uh, andhra pradesh so in our earlier days order will come on phone that will be centralized converted to the production planning will be communicated to the factory then factory will arrange raw material packing material and then will take production so several time it takes in planning itself it takes from one one day to five day seven day kind of thing while in digital kind of organization the moment your order is punched in system all your four five factories in different location can see the order is there and they can evaluate basis their capability what they can produce so that is the kind of flexibility we are having so i will not take much time i think uh, this is the beauty of uh, industry 4.0 in terms of flexibility and we can get benefit out of that hello i'll just build up on what uh, dinesh ji has said i think uh, if you reflect what does the customer or a consumer buy the customer or the consumer does not buy your products or services if you reflect they buy your process capability and i think digital okay factory is a key enabler to maintain that process capability because the consumer is very clear i need to 
get your product within the acceptable band which I've already decided. And I think I completely echo with you. I think digital uh, factory is a key enabler for that. Thank you, Dinesh. Uh, just to add this, uh, just to correlate uh, uh, what currently we are doing, GPay, Paytm, we are not visiting banks. Many of you or many of us are not visiting bank in last one year. This is all di digitalization. So we can correlate what is digitalization or internet on things, IoT, which we call it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dhiraji. Uh, digitalization definitely extremely very important in the manufacturing activity, uh, but at the same time, digitalization is also important in the sales also. And we all know that uh, it may make very easy work of the sales when you put the SAP, sales force autom automation and distributor management, management system. So digitalization will help in everybody and it is the future. Our future for manufacturing, either it is a food industry or non-food industry, digitization is a long-term future for everybody. Thank you. Now we come to the Mr. Parveen, latest plant technology and techniques enhancing, enhancing food quality and reducing the damage. Thank you, sir. So, uh, uh, what about the, this uh, uh, manufacturing 4.0 or digitization which we are covering? This uh, all things we are doing for the quality enhancement only. Not only co quality enhancement, this is also one thing, the cost. But pri the primary is the co uh, quality improvement and reduce the uh, this uh, damages or we can say the losses. So, what the, the, this uh, the, uh, manufacturing 4.0, this is AI, uh, artificial intelligence, and uh, the IoT, uh, um, industrial uh, internet of things, uh, big data analysis, which these all things which we are covering in manufacturing 4.0, basically uh, increase the productivity, reduce the losses. It means what the, pro the productivity, uh, productivity we are reducing, uh, somewhere we are increasing the quality of the product. And uh, apart from this, also one thing that uh, we are uh, doing the, the uh, conventional method that, that is uh, thermal process. Thermal process uh, is somewhere we are uh, uh, deteriorating the food quality, like uh, nutritional value if be heating the some uh, some uh, where this uh, protein denaturation, vitamin D deficiency, these all things uh, through heating process, uh, it is deteriorating. Moving forward, this is non-thermal technology, novel uh, technology, which is having like uh, hydro, uh, hydrostatic uh, pressure, uh, 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 pulse electric field. These all things nowadays, with the integration of uh, artificial intelligence and the internet of things, uh, we are adopting this because from this process, the nutritional value and vitamin D deficiency somewhere very minimal or no effect it is uh, uh, giving uh, on the product. So, uh, and apart from this also the latest technology, if we talk latest technology uh, also having e-tongue and e-nose. Uh, nowadays uh, this is e-nose uh, uh, application is a game changing application. Through manual process, uh, if we be doing sensory evaluation and also the fast process, if we want fast process, e nose is very good application. In one research uh, uh, oli with olive oil, in 12 kind of olive oil, uh, through e nose application, they have identified and every time, they have given accurate result with all different uh, olive oil. So latest, if we talk this uh, um, um, uh, e nose application, e uh, technology, now it is very, very, um, uh, every market is uh, adopting through uh, digitization. Apart from this also that having the, uh, the supply chain management, they are also having um, uh, this uh, through artificial intelligence, they are ch ch checking GPS system and the temperature monitoring system. These all things they are doing for the, uh, if suppose some, some where some, uh, some uh, vehicle is going and they are t t not mo monitoring the temperature, there may be some switch of the refrigeration system. Through digitization, they, we can monitor and we can find out root cause. Where it is having root cause, and, uh, immediately we can take corrective action. So it's very important, manufacturing 4.0, we can uh, uh, reduce the, this uh, losses, damages, and increase the quality of the food product. One more thing that uh, these all things we are doing for, for the fast process. 
because the unconventional method, if we adopt that process, it will taking long time to get the result. So the digitization is also having the, the fast process. We can get the result immediately. And lastly, one thing that the, the, in the current world preview, the, the, this is a, not a matter of a, a big fish. It's a, a big fish, uh, is a, uh, not eat a small fish. It's a matter of that uh, fast fish will eat slow fish. Thank you. Parvindi, thank you. I think uh, Parvindi had highlighted in a very nice way what is the technique to enhance the food quality and to protect the nutrition value. And there are some more technology allowable as the food technology and dairy technology concern. Just like a frozen food. If you are doing, we are also doing the frozen food and we are marketing and exporting in nearly 80 countries and by protecting the same food as you are making at the home. Because there is a slightly heat treatment and you are doing the frozen, so there is no need to make the second treatment. So frozen food is also good technology to protect the nutrition value and at the same time some quick method also, just like if you compare the retort with the UST, then UST is the better technology by which you give the high temperature for the short time. Now, I come to Mr. Anil Bhutani ji, Global Technology Trends in Plant Automation. I think uh, my friends have already shared a nitty-gritty in manufacturing, you know, the, how the automation plays a role and how the quality plays a role. There is no second choice for the quality failure. And uh, India food market is also changing, food manufacturing is also changing very fast, automation is happening very fast. I am just sharing one, uh, one of my experience uh, with Nestle Australia, I was working 20 years back where I saw a real automation plant running and I was a part of it where apart from uh, human hands, and a human error, so much of automation was there, uh, all data and losses and all uh, con quality controls were happening through automation only. So that particular change which I have seen almost 20 years back is also happening in India also in the big industries and now if you see Indian market, food market is changing, now the players from France, players from Holland, they are entering in Indian market and they are very much conscious on quality. When they come to audits of our pl Indian plants and they emphasize on the very, very basic things which Indian plants are uh, requiring to change for the quality upgradation and the quality assurance. Quality control is a second thing, now the quality assurance is also required, which industries is, has to change, there is no second choice in that and automation can definitely help in that particular factor. And each steps in manufacturing from raw material, from manufacturing, from uh, storage, from logistic, from marketing, everything can be automized and everything can be monitored and even the, uh, you know, which product is selling how much, how much is selling in which area, everything is now being automized and it's being now monitored in the industry. If you see the retail business coming in, in India, which is being, con they are controlling manufacturing supply chain also. And they are monitoring which product is running, which product is customer is liking. And uh, one thing as a customer, even as a manufacturer also, when we are paying a full price for the product, we have a full right to have a right product. So whatever is happening in the background, customer doesn't care. Now the world is competitive, Indian market is getting competitive. So to be the best, automation is the one of the best solution which has the guarantee for the quality and guarantee for the quantity on time and uh, delivering product on the right time on the market also is very important. So that's all I like to brief. I think the rest everything has been covered by my friends. Thank you very much. Just to add what Saras said, I think a very important, uh, one of the again a key enabler will be, and I'm talking more from a culture angle uh, in any organization, is a fear of experimentation, fear of failure. I think we have to promote experimentation, improvement, Okay, yes, it's okay to fail, but at the end of the day, okay, if you try, definitely our organization will have a, that continual improvement journey. So we have to remove that fear of a failure from whoever is experimenting it, whoever is trying to do an improvement. That's very, very important 
for an organization to have a, a continual improvement journey. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Bhutani sir. Uh, I think if we summarize, uh, the automation is the future of the food industry to compete the global market. And uh, every company has the good experience by doing the automation and it is the need of the future. Now, I think one minute has left, so we just close the session and ask uh, Salender Ji to just have a question answer. Thank you. Thank you, honorable panel members, and thank you, uh, Tyagi Ji, for wonderfully summing up the panel. Now, a uh, few questions from the floor, and I'm sure there will be a lot of questions for this wonderful panel. So, can we have the mic for sir, please? Sir, request you to kindly introduce yourself, and uh, humble request to keep the question brief for the sake of time. Yeah, uh, I'm Subhashish Das. I'm uh, Managing Director of Alpha Laval India. Okay. And I must say thank you, Tyagi, sir, for uh, bringing in the OE quotient, uh, quotient in there. And uh, my question is specifically to Tarun. You talked about prescriptive and predictive maintenance part of it. And uh, when we talk about manufacturing 4.0, it's a lot about data and analytics and algorithms and those predictions. So uh, where are we, the Indian food industry, related to collection of those data points? Because a connected equipment tomorrow will not give me the data that is required for prediction. So where are we on that? And what do we need to do? So I think uh, whatever industry I have seen, we are at very start phase, right? So currently uh, there is a steep mindset change which is required in industry, specifically on cost and understanding a right equipment and right analysis can overcome the cost which we are putting in system for the automation. For example, today uh, someone uh, goes and buys in gasket, right? And that breaks down or uh, the pump breaks down in two days or five days or seven days. We don't buy and reputed one. So like prescriptive maintenance will also tell you that this gasket is not going to work, right? You have to use a better one because this is a history of this gasket, right? And if I will talk about the prescriptive, it will also tell you what you need to do next. Right, whether you are doing the right maintenance or not. For example, in today date, a fitter will come, he will change some pump or he will do something in boiler or he will do any utility or anywhere in the process, say, I have a fear of failure. Today, if something will fail, I will be fired. So, there is a cost to it, he is doing it before time, he doesn't know what is the right time. So, prescriptive maintenance will exactly will tell you what is the right time when you need to change or when you need to do the maintenance, when you need to change the part, which part you need to change, on what parameter and how it will impact. Also it will tell that how much you can extend the process or what flexible, what parameters you will change in terms of input load, in terms of speed, you reduce the speed and then you can avoid the breakdown. Or if you don't have a spare, you can prolong the production. Thank you. Thank you so much and can we have a couple of more questions? Yeah. I am Nehit Vasavda from Amul. Uh, yes, we know that automation has its own advantages. And uh, at our factory, uh, we are uh, almost fully automated dairy plant. And at least in our group, we are considered to be a uh, pioneer in automation. Uh, we are on Siemens uh, uh, automation. My question is, uh, there are several advantages of automation. And now since we are uh, heading towards uh, 4.0, and as sir also said in Mondelez that uh, they have an experience of integrating several things. But uh, first question is that uh, our uh, supplier partners who are actually be doing automation for us because it will be an integration of several things. First of all, it is all pro manufacturing processes, then packing, then distribution aspects, then uh, uh, material testing, then utility supplies and all those aspects, all those factors or elements have to be integrated. 
and then you can come up with a very uh, you know a nice dashboard where you say that oh my specific consumption is this or my per, per kg cost is this so this kind of uh, you know dream that we have and that we are discussing are our uh, you know service providers are uh, you know aligned to that that is one and another thing is uh, we find very few such uh, automation suppliers most of them are you know depending on foreign technologies and uh, most of us must have uh, experience that in last six months we were out of semiconductors and many uh, you know automation uh, hardwares that we could not get and many projects were you know uh, delayed so my basic question is that are our service providers ready to uh, do this kind of uh, integration of all all manufacturing all all uh, operation systems and bring uh, to us a very because everyone would like to have a you know very nice automation and very uh, nice things on their dashboards particularly the top management would like, like to evaluate everything monitor everything on their dashboards but uh, i have this basic question that are they ready to do it or are they uh, able to integrate all those things and provide us a uh, good solution to it very 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 nice and very very means uh, common important question what industry is facing very practical question i can say in word so see uh, suppliers uh, i think are available uh, no doubt uh, but number of suppliers are less like rockwell automation siemens you have taken name so they are good supplier even modlige is partnering with these kind of supplier globally so they are but as i told in the beginning we need three things one thing investment second thing is understanding of the data and how we will drive means value drivers from that data so if we are doing any kind of automation first in industry we should have right person who can understand and what is my expectation over that data what supplier will do supplier will give you data you have told i want Uh, suppose for a very basic industry any, any we are doing packing then we need to measure weight so supplier will integrate your checkware with your computer and you will get lakhs of millions of data in a day now with that data what inference you want to draw what corrective action you need to draw that you need to define you will ask see programmer programmers are very very intelligent but they don't know what is your requirement you need to convert your requirement in digital language to programmer programmer will program you once you have will do that job so first thing what will happen first thing we need to monitor and human need to correct base human need to take corrective action basis that data alarms next step what is future of automation future of automation human will not intervene robots will take corrective action your computers will take action so that is the future in one one of the forum uh, we had certain discussion what is the future of food in food industry food habits what will happen so answer came what will happen suppose we all are sitting here we are hungry now so what will happen my gadget will tell me that i am hungry now and i need this much of calorie simultaneously gadget will alarm that see boss you are diabetic you are having gluten allergy you are having such kind of milk intolerance so you cannot take this now what will happen like doctor saab is maintaining restaurant so at least this will happen very soon at least this kind of data will go to restaurant restaurant will prepare food as per your need as per your health condition as per your calorific requirement and they will serve you maybe in future what we are expecting now in restaurants that will convert to the industry industry will give you packed food in that no doubt labeling etc there are multiple challenges but this is also possible so this is the future government has already started our health id so everybody is having health id now our health id is mapped with hospitals so first thing what will happen when you will visit any hospital they will be having your health record up last two years three years whatever i think they have started in uh, 21 september 21 so at least one year health record they will have after 10 year they will have 10 years health record 
but when this data will be available to public that data will be available to food industry that data will be available to restaurants restaurant will prepare food as per your need so i think if i have answered your question b need to be demanding b need to know first what we want so uh, till now we are in very very basic phase we still don't know what we want so that is our bigger problem rest suppliers will develop they are globally available they will be available in india also india is such a big country whatever we want that will be available in months or years hardly matters first thing we should know that what we want thank you, thank you so much for that question and answer and dr tyagi with your request can we conclude the panel uh, yeah if i i just answered your question so i think uh, after covid there is a slightly problem of the automation which i want to highlight here but it is a temporary problem lot of the vendors are available because lot of the manufacturing facility either it is siemens either it is lnt either it is schneider it is the rockwell has been closed down in the china the last 20 years and we have a very good experience how to do the automation of the traditional food so whatever we are getting slightly problem now a day after the covid due to the closure of the manufacturing unit of the china but it is a opportunity for the india also because the lot of the industry are coming to the india to start either it is siemens it is the rockwell or it is the another industry so it is a temporary problem now but uh, definitely the answer is yes if everybody will do the automation the supplier will also develop with the manufacturer thank you thank you so much dr tyagi and ladies and gentlemen a big round of applause for this fantastic panel on manufacturing 4.0 and now i would like to call on stage uh, mr virendra sathi general manager marketing from antelia scientific to kindly do the honors thank you so much virendra for doing the honors we'll start with mr shailesh godekar global corporate head quality from marico a big round of applause to shailesh ji for his valuable contribution in the panel session Mr Kumar Tarun Deputy General Manager Quality from Guild Free Industries a big round of applause to Kumar ji for his valuable contribution to this panel session Mr Anil Bhutani Head Manufacturing Mother Dairy Fruit and Vegetables a big round of applause to Anil ji for his wonderful contribution in the panel session Mr Praveen Kumar Arohi Deputy General Manager DS Group a big round of applause to Praveen ji for his wonderful contribution in the panel session Dr Dheeraj Mishra Manager of Operations from Mondelez India Foods a big round of applause to Dr Dheeraj for his wonderful contribution to the panel session and our honorable panel moderator and very respected dr ak tyagi ji executive director of haldirams a big round of applause to dr tyagi for wonderfully moderating the panel session i would request all the panel members to kindly come on stage for a group photograph and virendra if you could also join them So ladies and gentlemen that was your manufacturing 4.0 panel Mr Shailesh Godekar Mr Kumar Tarun Mr Anil Bhutani Mr Praveen Kumar Arohi Dr Dheeraj Mishra and our honorable moderator Dr AK Tyagi Thank you so much gentlemen for that wonderful panel session extremely knowledgeable and extremely 